he would take things to the next level to a point where now he's taking me home with him and my mom would not attify for me see the jama has put me in the car we're going to his place and he had a very big house and then i would get there and i'm like which which of these three rooms is mine and he's like we're going to sleep in the same room and there are times it would not even get to the room he would start to give us sit in room and i remember there's a day i had a dress he unzipped it and then i was not comfortable i kept doing this mm. and he would unzip my dress and he would touch me inappropriately and it broke me because how is my mom not you know doing anything about it but my mom passing away um i mean the painful part was her being gone mm. and the other painful part was she went with so many answers like when when your boyfriend was assaulting me why why didn't you believe me why did you always take other people's sides how many years did i have to cry to you to get me out of this place do you know how messed up i am mentally you know but do you think your mom failed you my mom was an amazing woman but if i'm being honest and being authentic i feel like she did i i don't know how to process the mm. the concept of a good man i want a good man committed man a genuine man respectful knows how to take care of a lady but sometimes when i see such men i'm like ah this is a trap and i always feel like if my own father didn't choose me i don't think any other man would choose me A uh, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Gogi. Now, I asked my guest today, what is your intention with today's episode? And she said, Lynn, I want to teach people not to wallow in their problems, not to keep having this way, not to keep being down, but remember that no matter what happened to them, they can use that to their greater good. And when I tell you she's been through a lot, I watched her story and I was like, oh my God, I watched it almost a month ago and I was like oh my god and then what are the chances that I would open my email and she was right there wanting to share her story so for me it was just an opportunity meeting preparation preparation meeting opportunity yeah she's about to share her story with us on our rebuilding series but before I do that guys you know I have to pay a couple of bills here allow me to say thank you to our partners at tap tap send for coming through and sponsoring today's episode and i love that a lot of you are using tap tap right now and just in case you are new here and you don't know what tap tap is it's a money sending app that allows you to send money to your loved one back at home it's fast it's reliable zero charges for you to send money back here and you can use my promo link so that you're able to get 10% cash back on all the figures being displayed on the screen and do not forget to download their app and let them know that we appreciate them and if you have any feedback about tap tap send i'm available on the comment section or even through my email info at lnn.digital and of course to say thank you guys to you for subscribing to our work na kama umeniona na hii nguo kwa episode nyingine sorry i'm doing this episodes on the same day nikasema si mnaendanga na the same outfit kwa office na mnaenda meeting tatu please please guys allow me to appreciate this outfit by murugi world by Murugi not an ad but I love her outfit so go check her out and now without further ado please allow me to let my beautiful guest introduce herself yeah I present it to you <laughs> <laughs> energy crazy if you had a little bit like <laughs> ching, 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 ching. <laughs> how are you I'm good <laughs> We said it on a high note. Nice to see you. How are you? I'm doing very well. Nice to finally have you on this platform. It it is such an honor. I'm super delighted to be here. Yes. This this is a platform I've been eyeing from a distance, but I'm like, guy, it's like when I could hear how could I watch when you wanna watch. Yes. But here we are. Come by and by. We come by and by. Na kama mzuri, mzuri. And we learn every day. Yes. Sini tawa. Yes. Yeah, please mm-hmm. tell them your name. My name is Susan Grace. I am a radio and TV presenter currently hosting Chris on NTV. 
I hold a very heavy bachelor's degree in mass communication, specialized in electronic media. What to add Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And above everything, I love God. Yes. And I'm super excited to be here. And yeah. I, I'm a lover of life. You know, there's a time I used to hate life so much. So these days, I say I am a huge lover of life. Mm. Yeah. What is that doing to you? Speaking positive words, mm-hmm. you know, manifesting great things mm-hmm. for your life, mm-hmm. replacing the can'ts with can, mm-hmm. saying I can do this. What is that doing? to your mind it's uh most importantly i'm doing a lot of things that were put in my brain you know um, i grew up being called a useless and hopeless child so as much as sometimes it creeps in there when you are not able to execute something that you had so much hopes for mm. and then it doesn't come through and you're like ah, i'm a mean useless and hopeless mm. you know so reminding myself that i can do it i will do it trying it if it fails i try again yes. and always being positive towards myself yeah. let me tell you Love, you have to start by yourself. You've got to start to love yourself. Teach people how to love you. Come on, you painly. If you don't believe in yourself, if yeah. you don't think you're you're beautiful, you you're created for greatness, how will people believe that in you? You've Good. got to start believing it mm. with yourself. That's it. Yeah. And I'm gonna start by saying, as I told you off camera, mm-hmm. you have a powerful voice. I should be on a podcast. Yes, you should. Yes, you should. Everybody on my TikTok is like, we need you on a podcast. You need to be on a podcast. And I'm like, I'm working on it. So, yeah, that is, uh, what should I say, 2024 resolutions? Yes. But I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's time somewhere. for me to start doing it. It is time. You yeah. have a powerful voice. I'm just sitting and listening to you and I'm like, Akio and you are the mass communication. Please, it will be end of You know how articulate you are. You know, Thank you speak you. with so much class and confidence. Mm-hmm. And for me, the kicker is, this has not always been the case. At some point in your life, you were at your lowest. So I really want to understand how you, be, you know, you you decided, you know, it's time, enough mm-hmm. is enough. Mm-hmm. Huh? But the series we are on right now, it's called Rebuilding, and we've stepped even a notch higher mm-hmm. to even call it building. Oh, I think Murugi was here, and they're like, it's either someone is rebuilding in mm-hmm. their life because something was either broken mm-hmm. and they are trying to fix it, mm-hmm. or we can also say I'm building. So I don't have a specific name for it so mm-hmm. we are either rebuilding or building mm-hmm. but to ask you what among the two which one are you doing right now and why i would say building yes really uh because the the old me i, I don't work with the old me i want to work with a new version of myself mm-hmm. right the old me was very timid was very easily disappointed um heartbroken uh, carrying a lot of weight on my shoulders and I, I was like, I have to let go of that. I had so much pain, so much bitterness towards so many people. Mm. And so I'm like, you know what, God, this has to go. Yes. So I'm building Susan Grace afresh. By the way, funny thing, um, I've, I've never embraced, I mean, for a very long time, I didn't embrace my name. So people are actually shocked to learn that my name is Susan Grace because Kitam Monilkwana Jitavi, you see even this bracelet. Yes. I was given by a fan when v. I was, yes, when yes. I was working at Kubamba Radio. And that used to be the name I used to go by, Miss V. So people would ask me, V not to copy. I'm like, yeah, no, you know, yeah, no, 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 excuses here and there. Yes. I just never wanted to be Susan Grace. Mm. I always wanted, kuna time ata nikaenda Facebook, nika jitengenezea jina fani fani. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> I used to call myself Marie Stella. <laughs> I don't even know where I got that name. I'm and, then, <laughs> and then I changed it to now V. Yes. And then people would look at my ID and they're yes. like, but, but where is V coming? Like, we really cannot see the math anywhere here. It is not math. It is you not math. I've got a kid on the back to Facebook. <laughs> Hi, Facebook. <laughs> what happened to Facebook by the You mm-hmm. know, I used to be so crazy on Facebook. I right. called myself two names, mm-hmm. right? No. Three. I used mm-hmm. to love watching One Tree Hill. Mm-hmm. One of my best friends, Zawadi, can tell you, loved watching One Tree Hill. So in One Tree Hill, mm-hmm. there's a guy I loved so much, not in the terms of, oh, he's hot and mm-hmm. fly and whatever. I loved his character. Mm-hmm. He was a dad, so he was taking care of his kid while doing school at the same time. And you want to know what his name was? Jake Jageski. So you know what Lynn does? Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't tell me you called yourself that. Yeah, Lynn Jageski. Please. Then I used to love Brooke Davis also <laughs> from One Tree Hill. So, Girl, no. Edgar, continue laughing. So, Girl, I no. go, I go, and I call myself. So, I used to love Brooke, right? Mm. And I also loved Haley from uh-huh. One Tree Hill. This is for the guys who used to watch OTH. Mm-hmm. So, me, I went and I called myself Lynn Haley Davis. 
Tafadhali mimi. You know what he said so, he was called yeah, Brooke. Yeah, yeah. So I used to call myself Lynn. She's called Brooke Davis. So mm-hmm. I went and I called myself Lynn Haley Davis. Anything. Anything. But still OTH it's my it's still one of my favorite things. Unajua bila mesema alikuwa anaitwa Brooke. Yes. And you Lynn. I thought yes. Lynn wow. Brooke. Brooklyn. No no si ni. Hey. <laughs> Come on Brooklyn. See. <laughs> DJ drop your beat. Pull up. Pull up. ก็ตัดอยู่เท่านั้นจะเท่านั้นอย่าอย่าอย่าอย่าเท่านั้นอ่ะเวสิฟานี่อ่ะอีโบซอซิมิเปเคนิลิสตรัมบอลอะยู
she goes back to get another belt and she beats you up and it's crazy mm. but for me the thing that hurt me the most were you know just the words that came out of her mouth how she would constantly call me a useless and hopeless child it's like you you know you're not good enough for anything and when you look at your life you're like it makes sense because where are my parents why did my mom dump me here because she i don't know maybe she doesn't find me useful or maybe i'm a burden yes. to her you know so it got to a point where it was unbearable for me so what i would do i would sneak into her bag i still have now my grandmother's bag i still have phone and i call my mom and i'm crying and i'm like mom you need to get me out of this place like you can't show show and i need tessa and i need piggy and i need to kana and mom is like oh i'll just talk to her and she talks to her and you know what happens i get in trouble so santa pigo kwa sababu why you reporting me to your mom do you know what i mean and it continued and continued so i endured tolerance for the beating and i'd constantly call my mom i'm like please you toy up i don't want to stay here like it's too much you know i was a child yes. you know and my mom my mom just kept saying i'll talk to shosho i'll talk to shosho i'm like i don't want you to talk to her i want you to get me out of this place it's it's too much now that i'm a grown up i know it was toxic yes. back then we didn't know and to be honest she didn't listen and then she used to visit once in a blue moon like and i remember she used to visit on a sunday afternoon after lunch time and then she'd leave at around 6 7 so i'm only seeing her for a few hours mm. and so now i got to a point where i considered killing myself at my grandmother's house right so when i finished my primary education there's a time my mom came to visit and just me being a kid i'm like mom can i see your keys your car keys so can i put it to akifikiri wacha mtoto acheze na funguo kumbe had packed my bags nikazunguka nikazeka kwa boot and i stayed with the kids and i figured when she's leaving obviously at an itafuta so when it's time for her to leave she calls me she's like uh, give me the keys i'm like leo tunaenda na wewe i have been begging you for the love of god to get me out of this place you don't listen so i pack my bags my clothes are in the car today we leave and she's like oh you know let's even talk about it now because shosho is here i'm like if you want to talk to her that's fine but mimi huko silali and i kid you not if i sleep here tonight i'm going to kill myself and i don't know i just walked out and i went to the car and i locked myself you know i don't know what chat they had with my grandmother but she came in the car and you know we left mm. and now when i came to stay with her things were very awkward now it felt like you were living with a relative and i would constantly lock myself in the room because staki kumsumbua because i've already felt like nimemsumbua yeah I've, i mean <clears throat> i'm forcing you to be my mom like how many more years do i need to cry to you to prove that i'm not unajua lin kuna time nilipigwa my nana that's my shushu's mom stepped in and told my grandmother just go in there grab the phone pigia mama huyu mtoto mwambie akuje mtoto kwa sababu utamuua kwa hii compound unajua ni kichapo gani unapata ndio mtu aseme utaliwa kwa compound you know so i started staying with my mom and it was very awkward she's a stranger i don't want to talk to her because like kumsumbua you know when she's downstairs i just want to be upstairs ha speaking of downstairs and upstairs si tukafika nairobi hiyo siku eh me see the life my mom is living bonge la nyumba and i'm and i'm thinking so why didn't you want to bring me cuz clearly you have the resources it's not that you're broke you're doing very well for yourself so in my head i'm like what was your excuse for not wanting me to come stay with you you know you by the nyuma ili nyuma but anyway i just would not i would not be in her space i would not talk to her i don't even think i told her when my period started i just figured it out and um so i just started this um tabia kujifungia kwenye room and i just stare at walls and then i started feeling i don't know some type of way i started cutting myself so i started cutting myself kwa miguu cuz i'd feel emotionally numb i'd feel of course i'm feeling a bit unwanted i'm i'm like oh my god um actually at some point i considered giving myself up to a children so that makes sense like i just take yes. myself eh ni seme family yangu it's like now asumbua sana let me just you know mm. stay here so i started cutting myself kwa mguu pole pole um and i don't somehow it helped me manage the numbness and then it got to a point where now i felt like for sure for sure i'm disturbing my mom mm. so what i did mm. i I wrote a suicide note and I told her mom I am so sorry for disturbing you. I'm so sorry for just being in your space. Um I'm mtakwacha mm-hmm. too. And I think your life will be better if I leave, you know, and I took an overdose. Yeah. And I mean obviously it didn't work yeah. because here we are. Mm-hmm. Um 
but I remember apologizing that note telling my mom I'm so sorry you know <clears throat> I'm so sorry yeah. I think your life will be better if I leave you don't have to worry about me asking for anything yeah. and I am so so sorry even for forcing you to bring me here just consider this my goodbye you know mm-hmm. and I think she found me in the sitting room yeah. clearly the the meds oh, didn't work yeah and so I don't know I think she felt a bit guilty because I could see she's trying to overcompensate so every once in a while she's like oh let's go get you know like money pedis and and whatnot but sikwana you enjoy sana you know so now things went to another level she had a boyfriend um so at first i didn't know it's a boyfriend nilikuwa nampata kwa nyumba i'm thinking they're talking business because my mom i mean she was her own boss sometimes she was working from home sometimes going to the office so at mm-hmm. first i thought this is someone from work mm-hmm. right and then eventually she introduced me to him and oh you know this is so and so blah 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 then i'd see him very often at home at sometimes ana lala nyumbani I remember there's a time my mom was making lunch and she told me go wake him up because I think he was taking a nap or something. Mm-hmm. So I go wake this man up and he tells me a team listen the next time you're sent to wake me up um you have to wake me up with a kiss. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking sija chanuka sana but this this don't sound right, mm-hmm. right? And I'm I'm like oh okay. So I leave the room he calls me back and he says it starts today. And now there's like this whole back and forth I'm like it's not right he's insisting and so for me I figured if my mom sees that ni make up stairs too long she'll come yeah so mimi nikamwambia we tu tu nini lunch iko tayari shuka ukule see sasa with time um it cannot to escalate pole 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 he'd start touching me inappropriately and now he got it got to a point where he would deliberately piss my mom off like push all her buttons touch every nerve of hers and i remember there's a time my mom got so angry she slammed the glass on the table i mean on the wall and then this guy goes like oh sophie you see now you're angry i don't even think it's safe for your daughter to sleep here tonight mm-hmm. let me go with her i'll bring her tomorrow morning mm-hmm. and he would aha before that i told my mom i told her hey this guy he so, yeah, yeah there's something he keeps telling me this kind of things and it's not right and the response took me by surprise because my mom was like ah sin we unashinanga tu ke hang out na yeye now keep in mind i don't hang out with this guy by myself when he's there my mom is there or she's probably in the kitchen she's in the environment i have never been alone with this man right and then for me i was very happy because i had a father figure i'd even consider him to be my stepdad right mm. so sometimes we'd see it i'd talk to him about you know things i'm interested in which my mom never should interest mm. right So I feel nice that I I kind of have like a dad, yeah. right? So when I'm telling her what he's doing and she tells me you're the one who's always talking to him or hanging out with mm-hmm. him. Oh, that that hurt, right? And now that's why he would he would take things to the next level to a point where now he's taking me home with him and my mom would not attify it for me. See, the Jamaa's put me in the car we're going to his place. And he had a very big house and then I would get there and I'm like, which which of these three rooms is mine and he's like we're going to sleep in the same room and there are times it would not even get to the room he'd start to give a sitting room and i remember there's a day i had a dress he unzipped it and then i was not comfortable i kept doing this mm. and he would tell me you know i love you so much if you allow me to touch you i'll marry you i will always love you that kind of nonsense mm-hmm. yeah how old are you here I was not 18 because I think I was freshly in high school. Mm. So that's really kind of me because six has come to kona 16 years. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, "Yeah, if just allow me to do it, if you allow me, you know I love you so much. I think at some point he didn't even tell me I love you more than your mom, some some nonsense. If you allow me to touch you, I will marry you, so I'll give you a good life. Just just a bunch of mm. you know. And I'd be like no I don't think it's right. So now I'd get to I I think it would get to a point where I notice that his voice is getting a bit aggressive and it's like he's getting pissed off. Now keep in mind kwenye niko I don't know how to get back home hata nikijaribu kutoroka, you know. And he would unzip my dress and he would touch me inappropriately and then sometimes when you get to the bedroom he would you know like do the thing but not with his thing but with fingers. This is all very new to me. And I think he did that more than once. 
and it broke me because how is my mom not you know doing anything about it you know um and i didn't know if i could talk to anybody about it because if my own mom is not listening to me i don't think there's anybody who's going to listen to me so i just endured the trauma and the discomfort but eventually i think she noticed uh uh now this is too much mm. so she broke it off baka i remember kacha was like a security but it was too late for me like so i didn't have to deal with that if you had actually taken a step to talk to him or the night he kick, he pissed you off and he said let me go with her you should have been like uh uh-uh. uh you can't you're not living this place with my daughter mm-hmm. you know but uh this didn't shock me because I remember as a child I kept crying to her for help she didn't listen this time I've cried to her for help she's not listened yes. so at this point I'm like you know what whatever happens at this I can't even tell you about mm. it you know you're not mm. you know paying attention eventually I could tell she's trying to overcompensate mm. um because I remember telling her hey me I don't to do 844 in high school she's like all right we looked for a school I remember she's actually the one who suggested let's go have a look at Brook House and I'm like Okay. Okay. Okay, mama, I see you. Okay. You know. Let me ask because I'm like yes. mm-hmm. house. We went there, we did an interview. But then we kept checking other options. Yeah. So she took me to the school that I I preferred. Mm. And then after that she even paid a trip for me to go abroad. After so she asked me after high school, do you want to study here abroad? I said yeah. abroad. She's like, "Okay." So I could tell. I mean, it's it's great, but I could tell it's probably coming from a place of Man, I was not there for cuz now she started noticing I'm like not okay cuz nilikuwa najifungia kwa nyumba even when I'm home alone I don't know lean I just could not be in the just in my room mm-hmm. you know but before we got to that point of overcompensating there's a time my mom left the house and never returned for a couple of days and I was home solo now the scary part about that was I had developed a condition ya yeah, kunos bleed so I'm nose bleeding nonstop you know and so she left this morning and it keep come a journey I'm like kwani she's not coming back hey a few days later I'm like aya kwani aliniacha you see now I'm also scared mm-hmm. I'm like okay I know I first issues to come here yeah aliniacha is sasa okay? meniacha hapa aende kwingine you know and I'm like okay if you really don't want me I'd rather only rule share to my sure. grandmothers But it was so scary because what do I do in this big house I'm alone I am very young um sujume and awapi I don't have a phone yeah. and then I'm scared because I feel like I'm dying because I was bleeding so much I even start feeling dizzy mm. I later learned that apparently there was a vein in mm. my cortex so blood was just coming out mm. and I remember I used to sleep downstairs and this one time she came home and she woke me up so when I'd sleep I'd wake up with a patch of blood because mm. kilala una jua damu inatoka mm. tu and then my nose is blocked mm. So I wake up, she wakes me up and she's like, uh, get up, we're leaving. We're moving." And I say, "Oh, we're moving. Okay." So I'm thinking we are moving like the two of us. She puts me up with a relative. And I'm like, "Oh, first she took me with, uh, to see with a relative mm. and then later to boarding school." Mm. And my entire life I just felt like she was constantly getting rid of me because at my grandmother's alinia cha huko nimekuja kuishi naye ameniweka boarding nimesema stack you should like for four she's put me in a different school as i'm discoolin she's put me the relative mm-hmm. when i now come back she puts me into boarding i'm like wow you know unwanted so she woke me up she's like we're moving so i'm so confused the pillow is so bloody i'm like oh my god like what is happening i'm like in my head i'm like where were you is everything okay like were you robbed did you like de- deliberately just vanish like what is not happening and now she put me with a rel- to stay with a relative sasa hapo mambo pia yakenda mrama so at some point everything was good then kuna time my aunt kicked me out of the house at 8 pm usiku and now what happened was there was a bit of tension she didn't want me to stay there and so nikaulizwa so at this point i didn't even started going for therapy cuz my aunt was like hey you you're not okay mm. right and so the first session i went i remember that doc told me hey we need to put you on meds cuz i couldn't sleep i i don't think i was eating very oh. well i am mentally disorganized mm. you know and i feel so alone i feel like i'm fighting battles by myself i don't have the support system everybody doesn't like me nini nini so they put me on antidepressants and let me tell you this medicine can you can easily get hooked because mm. they give you some sort of relief you sleep well 
your mind is alert during the day. But I think after one or two sessions, I didn't return because this therapist was their friend. And I'm like, I'm not quite sure about the confidentiality. Mm. I feel like I'll share things and you give them a summary. Mm. So no, no. thanks, you yes. know? And so of course I had to monitor my uh, meds consumption because I was also very suicidal. Mm. I could have just popped all of them and you know, I'm out. So I could tell there's a lot of tension. I feel like my aunt didn't want me there. But now that I've grown up, I think I've understood. I feel like she was angry at the fact that my mom was burdening her with me, yet my mom is quite capable. And you know, at she's the time, doing just fine. and she's doing very well for herself. And at the time, they had a very young kid. They're just trying to make ends meet. And then here goes my mom Everything. adding something else to mm. the list, you know? So. We planned that. What can you lose us? So where are you gonna go? I'm like, honestly, I'm not very sure about going back to my mom's. I don't know how she feels about me. So I would rather mm. go back to my show shows. Mm. And so we were to make arrangements. So my uncle told me, when you leave the house, let me know, then I'll take you where, where. Uh, so when I left, I called him and then he's like, ah, I'm just about to rush for a meeting. Let's do this, yeah? You just go back home. And then tomorrow morning when I'm leaving, we'll leave together. Mm. So Mahali nilishukishwa, it's not like a normal stage. So I had to walk. On my way walking, I got robbed. Nikai Biwa jacket, Simu, I had an extra SIM card, I mean SIM card and money. So I'm walking with a vest and it's gong. Then I walked for like three, four hours. So by the time I was getting home, it was eight. So I knock and my aunt is like, ha, sasa mbako umemo utakuwa na kuja time una jesikia. And I'm like, oh, trust me, ni may be worse to at this and this point, my money, my phone. Because she said, mbaka Simu unazima. And I'm like, ni may be worse Simu. I'm actually freezing because I walked from this point to this point. And she just goes like, you're not entering my house. And I'm like, what do you mean? You know, like, where am I supposed to go? And then I didn't know people in the in the hood, mm. in that neighborhood. And she's like, you're not entering my house. And I'm like, okay, um, given that maybe I might sleep on the streets today, can I come in and get a jacket? She's like, stand there, I'll get you a jacket. So she brought me... Um, it's like a white cream-ish mm. jacket. So I told her, if I'm sleeping outside and I'll probably sleep on the corridors, let me get like a, a, a black one, yes, a dark color. And she goes like, you wanted a jacket, I gave you a jacket. And she, because I was like, and I was like, oh my God. So I went to the stairs and I cried lean because I'm like, what do people do when they're kicked out? Like, where do we go? But... Oh yeah you know that question is so powerful mm -hmm. if someone has not experienced yeah. being kicked out mm -hmm. and you're asking yourself where do we go mm. ah. i'm telling you i remember there's a day my mom got kicked out and that question right there mm -hmm. where do people go when they are kicked out hey this one let me tell you i hate poverty hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey this is trauma right mm -hmm. here Hi, uh, uh, go on, go on. Tissues. No, 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 um, no, that thing, you know, and we went to sleep kwa mama mungine beshte yake alikuwa na uzanga waru. Let me tell you, the mother of people can show you once they know you don't have a place to, to go. go. I was watching my mom so helplessly and I was like, guy, chukwe ni mattress, laleni, I'm like, okay, anyways, well, moving on. My question, where do people go? Yeah. It's a heavy <laughs> question. It's a heavy question. It's a, that question is heavy. I Yeah. Nangajibu. Hey. So keep in mind I'm still in high school. So when I and I cried because out of panic, I'm like, like what do people do, right? So anyway, the good thing with me, I'm a very social person. Mm. I say hi to people. Mm. So Pale Chini Lukwana Jokuna Kinyozi Fulani. I went there and asked this guy to borrow his phone to call my mom. Now, there has been times, let me give this Kabak story so that you can see mm. why this instance was very painful. Mm. I remember there were instances where a group of friends, okay, not friends, but a group of people and I would go to visit children's homes and then to Kikuja, Kamanitawa, Mawapi, we sit down somewhere, eat, eat, and then start heading home. So there are times I'd go to railways, we used to stay in Mlolongo, alafu napata matatu zimeisha. So I ask a friend of mine, are you comfortable to host me? Like, you can ask your mom if it's okay. Mm. Then I also call my mom, ask for permission. Mm. And my mom, I told my mom, I'm strand. I mean, ni me fika really is hakuna matatu, but I have a friend who's willing to host mm. me, and her mom will call you just, you know, to Make be sure. sure. Yeah. And she tells me, no, no, it's all right. Just grab a taxi, I'll pay. Mm. Is it times mm. rakumbuka taxi? Watch a mamboya, easy taxis are up. Mm. Taxi, 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 taxi. Yes, they used to be very pricey. Mm. But she tells me, take a taxi, mm. come home, not once, not twice. 
So sasa hii nimefukuzwa. Nimeomba simu. Me I'm crying on the phone. I'm like, "Mom, I've been kicked out. I don't know what to do. I'm panicking. Nini nini? I'm so confused." And then she's like, "Ule fukuzwa ukidu." So I tell her the back story of how you know I, I was to meet with uncle today and then he changed to tomorrow nikashuka nikaibiwa I walked for this number of hours I got home at this time nini nini and then she goes like but you know your aunt has been complaining you're doing this you're doing that akaanza kunipasha kwa simu I'm telling her mom I'm telling you I've been kicked out it's late at night I am stranded I don't know where to go me I don't know people in this place mm. Like what do we do? She starts ananza kunikelelesha, akaanza kunikelelesha. I'm like, "Mom, could you please help me?" Like, you know, this at this moment I waited for her to say, "Just take a taxi. And I'll pay." Home. Yeah. Ama we meet in town. Ama just somewhere. Yes. Man, ali nipasha, ali nipasha, and then that broke my heart. So I just told my mom, "You know what? It's okay. I am so sorry I called you. I'm so sorry for disturbing. Me, I just wanted to let you know that I've been kicked out. I don't know where to go, and I'll probably be on the streets today and probably even tomorrow." I don't have anywhere to go. And for the record, I didn't do anything wrong. Certainly I didn't disrespect my aunt or anything, but it's okay. Mm. I'm sorry. Mm. And I hang up. Mm. I give back um the phone and I told this guy if she calls don't answer. See at ina matter it's cuz akipiga atakuuliza niko wapi and you don't know where I am cuz hata mimi sijui naenda wapi, mm. right? So that night I slept outside. I mean, on them streets of Ngong with the mosquitoes and there were levies on the streets. Me I was scared right and the next day i went to see this guy he used to manage a restaurant i begged for food i asked for food i'm like do you have food that nimebaki yeah yenye mnataka ngakutupa i'm begging for food my mom is living the life you know and so this guy asked me like what's not happening and i tell him the story at this point i'm like ah. You know I don't care whether people judge me so I, mm-hmm. I tell him what happened and he's like you know if you want you can come with me tonight to my place and I'm like ah, no thanks you know and then I thought if this guy decides to rape me I don't think it's the worst thing that could happen to me see my mom's boyfriend sort of you know did the introductory part of it see my mom was attacking kunisikiza when I'm calling for at this point like I don't think there's anything worse that than what I've already gone mm-hmm. through and so eventually I told him you know what so So when he closed up, he gave me food and then went to his place. When I tell you Lynn, this guy actually slept on the couch and he left me to sleep on the ah. bed. And I couldn't sleep because the whole night I'm like scared what if Nimelia the whole night. I'm like what is happening? Like what what is this life, you know? And then the next morning he gave me 500 shillings. Mm. He's like in case you need anything, here's money, but feel free to come to the restaurant, you know. And have some. Yeah. And I'm like thank you. Ah, <sighs> tell me how my period started when I'm on the streets. I'm like, wow, this could not get any worse, right? And I have 500, so that means I need to get pads. I probably need to like buy a towel, I need to buy like new undies, and I need to figure out where I'm going to shower. If I'm going to go ask a motel if I can when it's about 10 minutes, I shower at a kamanta patia kitu kidogo. And I'm like, kwa hii pesa hata sina pesa ya food, but I, I need to shower, you know. I, I bought the the things that I needed, mm. and then before I paid for a motel, I remember there's a a guy friend that I knew who used to hang out in a kapool mm. area. You know, your pool area, one Yes. I'm like, I'm just hoping in Tampata. So I go there, and they tell me, Ah, my kaja kuja bado. So I decided to sit there and wait. So the longer I wait, the more I feel dirty, you know. So later he comes, and I tell him, Can I please? Uh, come and shower mm. at your place mm. and he's like what's not happening of course i look so weird and chapad and pararad and i give him the story and he's like um sorry i can't take you home because my dad is home and mm. the dad used to be in the police force mm. so he's like if i take you home mm. it's not going to look good mm. and he's probably going to ask a lot of questions mm. so i'm like ah you know what never mind mm. but then he told me but my brother's girlfriend is around yeah. i could talk to her utone kama anaweza kusaidia eventually she came through She's like let's go home man i had not taken a shower in a minute she gave me food she gave me new clothes yani ali ali ni shughuli kali but the next day she tells me hey, i don't think you can sit you can stay for longer because my mom is coming back the mom is also in the police force yes and she's like unless you want to stick around mm. and tell her what it's happened story. and i'm like mm, no no thanks watch her too niende mm. so she asks me where can you go tonight And I tell her, I think I'll go to Embakasi. Uh, she's like, who do you know there? 
and I tell her there's this lady who used to be my mom's friend and I don't know she's like a show show to me so maybe she listened to me so dem akani peleka town akani buy a lunch so she paused she paid for my fare she told the driver usipite show msichana avenue park akambia makanga usipite show msichana avenue i think she told everybody in the matatu msichana asipite show avenue park so i go to this lady's house it's early in the morning she sees me she's shocked and she's like oh hi my daughter how are you i break down i break down because i'm not okay like i yo like this has been a very long week and she had family over so they were leaving mm. and she sits down she there was like you know a breakfast and i'm like i have not seen this much food in a minute so we eat and she's like what's not happening so i tell her the whole story and she feels so bad for me and she used to own a restaurant mm. so she asked me we go and then there appear to keep uh, to keep chit chat she gave me lunch mm. now she told me but you see now the day is coming to an end you you need to go somewhere who can we call and i'm like my mom no my sure sure no my auntie is no and i told her honestly i don't know where i can go um i i don't know if there's someone i can call and they'll come through for me so she calls i come here but i have to call someone someone needs to know that you're okay mm-hmm. so i told her you know what bye and bye let's call my grandmother So she called my grandmother and somehow my grandmother was excited mm-hmm. to learn that I was okay mm-hmm. and alive, right? So she asked one of one of her sorry, I don't know if it's Hassan or Hassan in law, Akanyambi, Akamwambia, I want you to take this girl to Kiambu town. Don't leave her if you've not left her in the hands of her grandmother, which is what happened. So my sister just bantering with me, she's like, "Hey, and your timing is perfect because we're going to Malindi tomorrow." And I'm like, "Oh, great." So to Kenda Malindi. Now, my mom had bought us tickets, she and I, to just go. I think it was like a mother daughter mm-hmm. thing. I don't know what happened to my ticket, but what I learned is now she went with my auntie and uncle. The ones who kicked me out. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, wow, is this like a rewarding system? Like you're rewarding them for kicking me out, leaving me stranded on the streets. I when kasema ni pesa ni yako, you do what you want to do, right? So when we Malindi there's this day where we met halfway mm-hmm. so the Malindi team and the Mombasa team mimi nimekaa kwenye gari sikushuka and then my mom comes oh hi Njeri I, I don't say anything my uncle hi Njeri my auntie hi Njeri I, I don't say hi back and I'm like you can't possibly be saying hi to me like nothing happened like you didn't just mm-hmm. kick me out mm-hmm. you know So I got kwenye gari wakashuka ma story nini. So when we got back to the hotel my grandmother started shouting at me. Oh how disrespectful your mom is saying hi you umekatu. I I think for once I spoke back to my shoshu and I said let me stop you right there because when I was out on the streets nobody has asked me what happened. Nobody knows whether I was assaulted, whether I was raped. No one knows what I was eating, where I was sleeping. I don't think even anyone cared about my whereabouts. Sasa mnashughulika na salam. I'm like no we're not pretending. I'm not going to pretend that everything is okay. And I remember I walked out I went to the pool and okay part of me was like I tell you what I'm coffee na mangumi but I needed to vent I'm like mbona unanipasha kwa sababu ya kutosalimiana. Do you know what these people have done to me? They've kick I called my mom the night I'm crying I'm begging her to come through for me and anza kunipasha. Alafu unashughulika na salamu. Ah no. I I nah that one I didn't have grace for it. I didn't. So And anyway, eventually my mom and I sort of patched things up um and that was after high school before I went abroad mm. and I think she was scared that I'm now going like going going mm. abroad and she'll be solo mm. and we started being buddies and then when I came back we were still working on the friendship and then unfortunately she passed away mm. and I'm like hey hey maisha i kupati break you know so the the worst thing about her passing was I I I saw I saw it. I saw her oozing out a lot of blood. You were there. I was there Aline. Watch and come she had a flu. You know Jovelle to nasema ngai ni homa tu itapita. But now I noticed her flu is just like getting worse by the day. And I told her mom I'm going to town tomorrow can I get you meds? And she tells me no I'm good. She was very healthy by the way. Mm-hmm. She's the type to what to green tea, red tea, oh, sidri honey oh, instead of sugar, oh, oh. sidri zile my lettuce blending mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Those gross uh-huh. things but yes. healthy yes. she was super healthy Edgar. yeah <laughs> <laughs> hello Edgar. <laughs> 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 um 
<laughs> and so this flu she was managing it yeah. with hot water honey lemon ginger this that concoction and i told her mom you've been taking this thing for a while and i couldn't improvement yeah so i'm going to town tomorrow do i get you any meds you know she's like no no i'm good so the next day i'm like i'm going to town in case you changed your mind she hadn't changed her mind so later that week on sunday me i'm waking up my uncle is downstairs and i'm thinking it's not a big deal because my mom was into real estate and yes. sometimes they would go with her brother my uncle now mm. to just check out property mm. and i'm thinking it's nothing out of the norm so my aunt calls me she tells me hi jerry i'm trying to call your mom her phone is not going through i'm like oh she's downstairs let me mm. tell her to call you mm. so i tell my mom to so your time though unfortunately fidel had passed away mm. right last son oh now your time being the typical gen z i was back then me i had no idea what is happening in kenya in so when they're talking about fidel i'm thinking they're talking about someone they know because mm-hmm. they're talking about fidel they're talking mm-hmm. about Nairobi hospital mm-hmm. and i'm thinking it's someone they're going to see in Nairobi hospital come eh. it's my mom who's going to the hospital so they went and then when she came back she had a very big brown bag mm-hmm. in a jammer down mm-hmm. and so i'm like see i told you so that night um you know people say when someone is dying it's like they know they're dying so my mom was she looked very okay she actually looked like she had recovered there was this glow and excitement like i could see and i'm like she's actually doing much much better mm. and i was very hopeful i remember she made us dinner or tea and snacks mm. i can't remember to look at dining banter stories we are laughing high-fiving so my uncles watched the 7 p.m bulletin and then mm. they left to go home and so me, i'm thinking ah yes this this is good mom is feeling summer. better mm. nini, nini. so i go back to my room and after a few minutes i hear my mom coughing downstairs but the way she was coughing it was an aggressive cough and i'm thinking maybe i'll kunya magic amnyonga ile akifua eh nikafikiri maybe amechukiwa kikunywa dawa eh so nikaka kidogo i hear her coming upstairs she's still coughing and then she stops then she's still and i could tell sasa mengia kwa her bathroom mm. then she came out and went downstairs and i'm like ai So I put my laptop down. I go downstairs to follow her. So I find her in the guest a bathroom. Hey, Lena, I've never seen that much blood in my life. She's holding on to the sink. I can tell she's weak. And it's just blood coming like every time she coughs, it's coming out, it's coming out. And for me, I was in so much shock. One because I'd never seen my mom weak. Even when she's tired, she's you know those moms of I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. She was a strong woman. And now I'm seeing her actually being weak. I was like, guy, this this is happening you know and then i'm seeing all this blood coming out of her mouth she's looking at me like oh my god like this is bad you know so i i i call my uncle and i'm like you need to come back home mom is not feeling well just like what has happened and then she's like wait is she the one i can hear coughing in the mm-hmm. background and i'm like yeah but she's not just coughing she's mm-hmm. also coughing out a lot of blood mm-hmm. and then i can see sinki meanza kuja so damu itaanza kumwagika chini and i'm like hey so i ran to my neighbors i knocked that gate non stop So the lady comes she's called mama makena and she's like jerry are you okay i'm like no mom is not feeling well i'm not in a position to drive her to hospital please help me rush her to hospital eh to get hospital it was such an emergency we were going to corridor they're trying to get her veins from gongenini to resuscitate her and then that doctor sent for another doctor they have this awkward at some point um mama makena told me jerry let's let's go outside mm. i'm like uh uh-uh. i'm 20 i got this whatever is going to happen tonight i got this you know And then so the doctor sent for another doctor they come they're trying to resuscitate her and then they exchange this galuk of this is bad yeah this one we can't mm. so mama cannot tell me let's actually go outside so she goes outside and she tells me you know if you ever need anything i'm always just next door and i'm like ah, i don't want to hear this i i don't want to hear this you know so she had to go back home because she has a kid mm. you know the makena mm. and at this time my uncle had come And I remember I sat outside to get some fresh air and I told God, "Hey, Zajayomba, for weird, I've never asked for something weird, but tonight I will. Please don't take my mom. Put her in a coma. Let her go in a coma. You can't just take her tonight. There's no way I'm going to wake up with a mom and go to bed without a mom. Like, please be kind, you know." And I begged God. I'm like, "I'd rather she's at a coma in two days." <laughs> you know come just to give me time to process what is happening tonight because this is too fast mm-hmm. you know and manko had gone inside manko is another strong man so when he came outside uh i asked him how is she because a part of me was still hopeful that she'll you know be in a coma 
and he just does this under his specs and he says Jerry I don't know what to tell you and I'm like I think you just did you know and I instantly went numb I don't feel like crying I don't feel like screaming I I don't feel like talking I I I don't feel like doing anything and I said oh okay so I sat outside um at this point you know my grandma had also been called she came in she's crying and she's like oh my god you can't be doing this to me because she also lost another daughter that's my aunt in 2008 and she's like yani god atakuwa tu anachukua wasichana wangu and i'm like oh my god please stop you know so they went inside to see her body i think at this point she had been put in a room mm. and i didn't have the strength to go inside um ah, this was too much for me in one night so eventually they gave us another opportunity to go see her in the morgue and as she was lying there sasa you know i can see all the blood over here even on her blouse mm-hmm. oh before we rushed to the hospital and this is the last thing my mom told me mm-hmm. she told me jerry don't bother because i don't think i'll make it and for me to have had my mom at meeting that she's actually losing this battle i knew yani imemlemea because my mom is strong she figures things out you know so when she told me i don't think i'll make it and then only for me to learn later she mm-hmm. actually didn't make it mm-hmm. i was like mm-hmm. Hey god I wanna rumor you know so when I went to see her in the morgue I remember shaking her kid look I'm like mom 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 and she's not responding and I remember I just kissed her forehead I'm like what well I guess this is goodbye you know and for the next one week Lynn I was numb confused and I even questioned god I'm like why would you do this like this is my only parent I don't have siblings I I don't like I don't have father. anyone. Yeah. And I'm like, "Wow." Anyway. Yeah. I'm like I know everything happens for a reason, but hey god, I'll need you to explain to me mm. the reason for this, you mm. know. And you know, that whole week was I think if you visited me that week, I didn't look like someone who had just lost a mom because mm. I was super super numb, you know. I'm in shock, I'm in denial. A part of me is like she traveled, maybe she'll come back. Part of me was like maybe the hospital will call us and say mm. oh she woke up you know <sighs> man i i was so hopeful and then on the funeral day like you shook the casket that first scoop of the soil that hits the coffin oh my god it unlocks so many emotions man and i remember somebody just held me back because i was ready to jump in i was like i there's no way i don't know how to do life without my mom there's i don't know and then you hear stories of people who've been left behind they don't have parents and relatives just grab everything and they leave you stranded man I was scared ha <sighs> you know but my relatives were quite supportive mm. i think that's one thing i'm always grateful for but my mom passing away um i mean the painful part was her being gone mm. and the other painful part was she went with so many answers like when when your boyfriend was assaulting me why why didn't you believe me Why did you always take other people's sides? How many years did I have to cry to you to get me out of this place? Do you know how messed up I am mentally, you know? But then I realized it's is on Masali. They will always remain unanswered because she died with the answers. I really wanted to know why I had to go through all that trauma. Mm. And she was my mom, is it that she didn't want to be a mom? Mm. Is it that the concept of motherhood was new to her? Is it that she actually genuinely didn't like me? Is it that she was bitter at my father for making her pregnant and leaving her and now she's just projecting? I have so many questions, but over the years I've learned I is Amanda. Mm. I there's nothing I can do. And just what I was saying earlier, I'm not going to allow my past to hold me hostage. Whatever happened happened. I'm a different person now. I bounced out of it. Um I was bruised on Isaac cut Mark Soko. Yeah. I was, I was surviving the pain, the numbness, feeling dead one minute. It's too much. One person to bear. Then my father shows up at my fu- at the, sorry, at my mom's funeral. Hati am your dad. And I'm like, "Sir, you are 21 years a bit too late. Like, wanna drive to me pitia because sin a dad. Wanna drive like kids have made fun of me because I don't have like a dad." this is the time you're showing up it's a bit too late you know and i was like did it have to take my mom's passing for you to show up you know um when when i needed you to show up and say i'm this girl's dad you didn't show up why did i have to be sexually assaulted by a stepdad 
because I don't have a father figure, you know. So you showing up and tell me I'm your dad, let's catch up. Mm-mm. But then it him dismiss cuz okay, mentally speaking I didn't have that capacity. Cuz I'm like sasa wait wait, like where do I start, you know? Um and he came tipsy by the way, which I totally understand. I think he was coming to talk to me for the first time. He didn't know come and pick up my coffee, you know. And I told him, "I you are 21 years a bit too late and it's one thing to be a father it's another thing to be a dad you know let's not do this that mm. because mom is gone we mm. let you go from a distance what are you yeah, yeah let's let's not do this uh, catching up you can't just show up casually it's like you went for five hours 20 years you know so those eight years ago my mom passed away in 2015 january when people are saying happy new year people are telling you my condolences You know kitu kingine by the way fanya nika sadiki god I'm like eh hey, if not tunaanza mwaka surely you know but then the thing about death is you're never prepared hata kama it happened media I I mean it still would not have been any less painful but yeah that was eight years ago I saw my pops and I honestly forgot how he looks I mean unless ni mwana tena ndo nako like oh you've not seen him again no not even heard from him have you felt the urge to reach out No because I okay I realized um for a big chunk of my life I used to be very bitter towards him but I like I had like I was said I was telling you, I had to let go of so many things and so I I don't feel anything towards him like I'm not angry at him I'm not eager to meet him but if I do it's not like I'll dismiss him I just have no feelings towards him if he shows up again mm-hmm. good I think right now I'll handle it differently mm. But it's not something I wake up thinking of. Oh my God, let me look for him. It's I really have zero feelings towards him. Because mm-hmm. um, I also used to feel like he waited for my mom to do all the work, and then for him he just shows up when I'm an adult, you know. So I have nothing against him. Um, I mean, when it's Father's Day in my heart, I celebrate mm-hmm. him because biologically speaking, I would not be here, mm-hmm. but not for him. But I don't really go looking for it. People tell me, oh look for him before it's too late and i'm like so why is this been put of me i mean put on me is there someone telling him the same thing look for your daughter before it's too late amasa sami mimi ndo napatiwa pressure you know if he wants to he will i'm not praying day in day out for him too but if he doesn't want to piani sawa and then a little birdie yes told me <laughs> Well, this man yeah. is quite generous when it comes to making other people pregnant. Yes. And I was like, "Oh, I don't think I'm even ready to learn that I have step siblings. I have lived my entire life knowing it's just me myself and I." Yes. So when someone told me this, I'm like, "Ai. So, tunaweza kwa tuko wengi?" I'm like, "No, that's something else I don't even mentally mm. ready for. Mm. Learning that I have step siblings." Yeah, no man ani got wait, watch a killer to to a kai give ya ke. I mean, if a day comes and I'll feel in my heart like convicted to look for this man, I will. But say I won't torment myself. Mm. I'll look in. Am I imagine looking him after na attack, you know. Okay. And then he's at the, if he knew about my mom's passing and he showed up at the funeral. Then he's probably in touch with someone who's close to me. Mm-hmm. Why hasn't he persisted? And I don't know, maybe even called me. Mm and said you know i'm sorry first time it was not good timing but can we yeah talk? can we try this again mm. you know but i don't think out. that burden falls on you it doesn't please it say doesn't. that again for the people at the back yeah i don't think yeah you know, and we, we have to stop normalizing these things so i know it's very conflicting because i feel like it you are a child yeah parents need to be responsible he's the one with the answers you are looking for so this burden doesn't fall on you thank you 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 know you've had to go through a lot mm-hmm. now for you to go and start looking for an adult na na i don't think that burden falls on you honestly, my yeah. views honestly yeah. i don't think it does yeah, you I know? share the same sentiments mm-hmm. it's it's not fair mimi ndo nimepitia trauma alafu mimi bado ndo mnataka ku guilty but he go look for your father The same way he found me at the funeral. Mm. I, I, you know, he'll find me again. He will. Yeah. Clearly he has details. He, he has does. contacts here and there. But how are you healing? Oh, when I say I've healed by the grace of God, I actually mean it because mm. I have over time 
see looking at the pattern where you opening up to someone about shida alafu they just dismiss you i really struggle with opening up to people so when i'm going through something i take it mm. come a soldier mm. you know but i pray a lot but the depression you see this cut this cut over here let me tell you the story about this this cut was going to be my last cut because god works in mysterious ways so this cut was supposed to be here because the plan was i slit my entire wrist bleed out mm. and i'm gone so what happened is i sidrin ilikuwa na filaji but clean i i was just feeling like i'm about to explode this so much you know what i mean to like bottle things up and i just felt like going off so what i did i broke a glass because i was like i don't use isn't ilikuwa na tumia wembe but i was like i want a glass ile yenye ikinikata imenikata yeah and i remember saying this to myself this is going to be my last cut because it's the cut that either puts me in my grave or gives me a turn around but i would prefer if it actually puts me in the grave because i am tired no jani mara ngapi nimejaribu suicide lean like you feel like i i really don't feel like i belong here i feel like even with my departure nobody is going to be affected you know nikasema this one this one has to work out And then because I again I had so much pressure and my brain was clouded my vision was clouded so me ni kachukua glass na nikajika kajikata in my head I knew you kati kwa hapa and I remember I wrapped myself in tissue and I slept because I wanted to sleep I wanted to die peacefully kwa takatwa same she died in her bed somewhere lying down so I wake up the next day of course I'm disappointed because I've woken up and then I remove the tissue and I'm like how is this cut here I I don't understand you know And I remember telling myself if this is not God who either moved that arm I can't explain it. I really cannot. Like nilikuwa nimekaa hivi lean. So I'm like how did we I, end up here? And I'm like maybe God pushed the hand but mm. he wanted the scar to remain there because remember I said this is either mm. the one that puts me in the grave or the one that just gives mm. me a turn around. And mm. I remember when I woke up I cried. I cried mpaka nikalok mlango at the time I was staying with my cousins. And I told God, "Man, I am so tired." all these years of carrying this burden on my shoulders mm. all these years of crying covering my mouth like my face with a pillow when i'm crying because i don't want people to hear me crying oh, that's another one yeah it's very very familiar when mm. mm. you don't want people to hear you crying you don't want them to ask is everything okay mm. and i told god genuinely speaking i'm tired like i can't do this yeah. suicide umenikatani kuja nyumbani so if i want to, if you want me to stay here man change things up mm. you know And I told God I feel like I gave him an ultimatum and I told God you took my mom that was my only family like direct family imagine you have to take care of me I don't know I don't know what I'm doing mm-hmm. I don't know how I'll do this life but you have to take care of me yeah iyo 100% nimekuachia mm-hmm. please take care of me even when I go astray please take care of me when I get lost take care of me when I get depressed take care of me mm-hmm. when just take care of me kwa sababu umenichukulia mzazi utakuwa mzazi wangu mm. and for sure he has taken care of me oh, he, he has. has taken very good care of me he has cleaned me up i i feel nice when people tell me you're glowing and i'm like ah oh, yes it feels, it feels nice you know and and here we are by mm. by the grace of god mm. um and when we started i told you about this we were mentality it's very easy for me to say you know we look at what i've been through we my mom didn't like me my pops what 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 But you see you have to snap out of that eventually. Kwa like you know what it happen it happen. Mm. There's nothing I can do about it. Mm. But now I have to change the story. Mm. I have to be the one to end that generational pattern and mm. generational curse of unnecessary traumas, you know? And hence why I'm super super positive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's nice. How do I know I've snapped out of it or I'm in denial? How do you differentiate the two? Right. But the denial is part of the healing process. Mm. Um I think in grief they talk about you are in denial then you are angry then you start beginning with god but they I did that a lot when my mom passed away nilikuwa naambia god akirudisha tu mamangu i promise sita isin you know and then it gets to now you're depressed and eventually yeah. you accept yeah so denial is part of the journey just don't stay there for too long mm-hmm. right so how do you know you've snapped out of it um there's usually a pattern of things that you do for me it would be constantly in bed poor eating habits or oh, i had insomnia i would barely sleep now the cutting do you know i was so addicted to cutting myself and i mean that kuna time nikiwa kwa matatu 
you know how when you really need to use the bathroom mm. kukoma tv mm. me i used to be like this because i need to get home and cut yourself yeah so i can feel the relief and, oh my god it was bad mm-hmm. it was bad so when i got over it lisa mata sit at top my razors so i kept them there because i wanted to prove to the devil by the way i can get out of this mm-hmm. thing i will see this razor and i will not do anything about it if i'll do anything about it probably trim my eyebrows but i'm not going to cut myself so you just notice if there's a change in patterns for me in york would kata kata constantly and then there are times i'd be okay but i'm like this i'm not used to constantly mm-hmm. being okay so now i'd cut myself mm-hmm. because i feel too okay i don't know if that makes sense yes yeah so cutting myself not sleeping very well not eating very well um the things that you watch do you know at some point i started watching a lot of i don't know how to pronounce this name euthanasia yes. the assisted suicide yeah <gasps> this time i restarted my computer and then nika click youtube and then you know how youtube suggests Recommends. yes videos based on what everything assisted suicide suicide assisted and i was like i've been doing the most you know so also now the things you start noticing that you're watching different things mm. your music is Changing. different mm. you generally even feel different uko na appetite ya kukula you are excited to see what the day has in store i mean you uko na uhai you you feel it yeah. but then you'll also notice in the change of patterns mm. and the things that you used to do to do habits to do good yes you no longer feel the urge to do those things mm. yeah therapy oh therapy in me dodge therapy uno na pavile nalia alafu ni nakwa therapy sana kwambia so Let's talk about your childhood. Ushaanza ku break down. So your mom, how did that make you feel? I'm like I don't know if I'm ready for all those emotions, yes. but I know that it's necessary. As much as yes, I know for a fact I'm in a different place mm-hmm. in a space right mm-hmm. now. Therapy ni muhimu. Yeah. I I feel like that is a part that I I lazima nipitie hapo. Nipende nisipende. I was supposed to do it last year and I was like, okay, I'm not ready. Ndio hii mwaka inaenda kuisha nikisema I don't think anyone is ever ready for therapy right no, I don't think but I've been in therapy mm-hmm. it's it's a stepping stone to so many things like yeah. so 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 I can't even start to explain like right now mm-hmm. I go to therapy for myself the things I've been through mm-hmm. and also to debrief for some mm-hmm. of the shows that I host ah, and yeah. it's 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 healing it's healing but i can tell you no one is ever ready really? for one but if you just gather a bit of strength to go then just go then just go honestly just go it's 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 healing but do you think your mom failed you listen my mom was an amazing woman but if i'm being honest and being authentic i feel like she did when i was a child she could have come through for me when her boyfriend was doing the thing she could have when I got kicked out mm. she should have done something you know and even some pre preparation like i wish she sat me down to tell me things about boys when a boy touches you this way it's inappropriate when a guy asks this it's wrong that would have mentally prepared me so that even by the time this guy is saying oh sophie you're mad let me go with her to my house i, I should have been like uh 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 had to talk kwa nyumba you know mm. but there wasn't that kuni type mm. just to prepare me for what is in the world mm. you know um when i'm calling you telling you i'm stranded because i've been kicked out unaanza kunipasha kuniambia your aunt has been saying she has been saying she has been mm. so when have you ever called me and told me hey jerry your aunt is saying this and this and this yeah. could you improve could you yeah. stop did it have to wait until i've been kicked out mm-hmm. you know so she was an amazing woman very supportive i'll always be grateful for everything that she did mm. but i can't overlook the fact that some of the things she did or failed to do cost me my mental health mm. brought me some uncalled for trauma mm. i i could have dealt with the childhood trauma of my shoshu yes. but this boyfriend this could have been avoided yes you the know? boyfriend especially yeah. what do you want to tell parents who are watching right now mm-hmm. who expose their kids mm-hmm. to this much trauma i it's a very good question you don't have to traumatize your kid to instill discipline okay kupiga ni sawa you know they say spare the rod spoil the child i get it unaweza mpiga mchune but to a point where unapiga kama gunia ya mahindi i no and then also the second thing something else that i also experienced i feel like any negative report that got to my mom my mom believed it she never asked to hear my side of the story 
So as a parent also try to Lila amekuja amesema Susan amefanya ABCD. As a parent check in with Susan. What happened? Why is Lynn saying you did this? Cuz they barely especially so your generation ya kitambo mm. our moms and aunties and grand, they never used to listen to our side of the story they were convinced eh they were convinced we went to kwa mama by the way you are I, wrong children should not speak mm-hmm. to an iguzie mtoto wangu like i'm not even kidding <laughs> like i'm not the guy i'm not even playing with you right yeah. now i i like mtu aniguzie mtoto like you, you get them. it mm-hmm. eh? not in a way of sijui at discipline and whatever i'm um, children belong to the community it's okay if you feel like you want to caution my kid and mm-hmm. whatever but jaribu kuni project here kwa like i don't let me leave that you here. there yeah. yeah and that's the other problem yeah. projecting muko na mashida zenyu life maybe things are not working out yeah. and totally stress mm-hmm. and you see as as i grew up yes i i would start to put two and two together and i figured they, maybe my grandmother was not angry at me she was angry at other things maybe at know? my mom exactly because mama kali she came but you know my mom my shoshu used to be in disciplinary committees yeye alikuwa na line ana lainisha watoto sasa yes. anakuja anasema ni lainishie mm-hmm. huyu so i know she got some i don't know maybe form of shame her ego yeah. was bruised when ana lainisha watoto wenyewe lakini mtoto wake ameshika mimba so i think she was angry at that yes, but deal, because i'm the one who's there deal. let <laughs> me know? tell you you mm-hmm. know it's it's a joke until you sit here with hundreds of people and the childhood traumas are the reason they are the way they are right mm-hmm. now that slap that was not necessary your matusi that was not necessary that yeah. you are useless punda wewe all these things that were not necessary you think they take they take a day to get out of your head oh, no. i'm sitting with 50 year olds who are remembering what they their mothers did, did to them what their fathers did to them you get what i'm saying yeah. 50 years 0000 all the way to 50 years and you did this thing to a child because it satisfied your ego mm-hmm. you know you are like mimi ndio mzazi hapa 50 years later your kids Someone are remembering these things mm. that i said i'll even make a short video i saw there are so many people who are not visiting their families who have cut ties I early in the mm-hmm. morning I was ho- just hosting Lydia here one of our guests and I asked her would you go back to your farm she's like no let's love each other from, from a, a distance, distance. you mm-hmm. get what i'm saying mm-hmm. there's a reason your kids are not coming to christmas anymore there's a reason your kids are not visiting you anymore those kids are in their 30s 40s 50s it's because of the of trauma. The trauma you know you, yeah. you get what i'm saying and it's sometimes i say it's okay to love people from a from distance lakini mimi uniguzie mtoto i am telling you that is the day i resign Mm. and I, sometimes parents are shocked they're like oh stream bora na hakuji kunitembelea yeah, are you sure you exactly are you sure are you, you don't sure know why you? your child is not showing if you look up closely wait i do that know. video you will see i say that's one of the videos that i have to do because yeah. i sit here and i host people who are broken and i know you can choose to do it differently mm-hmm. my mom had all the reasons to be mad at us to project life delta a blow but she chose not to, to she, she, she chose different. not to you mm-hmm. get what i'm saying yeah. so we can't come with an excuse of but there's nothing else we could have done there's a lot you would have there done there are always options there's yeah. oh, there are always options you yeah. get what i'm saying mm-hmm. mommy i'm proud of you thank you like, so much like honestly i'm just like proud of you but let me ask you host a very powerful show on mtv cross Right. We take you back as we celebrate the golden era in the Kenyan gospel industry. Is it a healing space for you? How do you feel? Yes. Um I think just going out and, and I mean just being out there and hosting this show it um I always remind myself I'm pouring out to the people. Mm. And I'm like I don't know who's watching today. And sometimes it's not at necessarily with me yes. going and oh here's a vast mm. I want to do it. No. Yes. I think sometimes it's just me showing up, having a good time on the mm. show. Mm. And then knowing that there's someone who's watching mm. me mm. and they might go on the internet looking for me and come mm. across my story and they're like wait, this Susan is yes. this Susan yes. and they'll be encouraged by that. Mm. People who know my story where I've been um from, see me on that platform they're like eh hey, umshana ametoka bali kuna mm. mungu. Mm. You know so it's It's therapeutic. It's a constant reminder of the things that God is doing for me. Mm. You know just sometimes to kiss my God. We don't say it at because it's a Kenyan phrase. Mm. It's cuz mm. when we look back, we really can't take any credit for anything that has happened in our life ni God. That part imagine. Hapo sana we sana. sana. We can't take credit. Yeah, we it's, wonder it's how God. we did it. Mm-hmm. It's God. Ni Mungu. Mm. We can't. Yeah. Even me sometimes I look back and I'm like, "Where? 
this nearly mm-hmm. <laughs> pita and then mm-hmm. there's a time i was scared um when my mom's boyfriend was doing the deed and i'm like so if i end up pregnant whose fault is it going to be is it my fault or who's who's going to take the blame i actually thought about it and i'm like mm. if things took a different turn and i ended up pregnant sasa shida ingekuwa ni nani susan ameleta hebu kwenye familia ameshika mimba oh atajafika 18 mm. you know now i would have been stereotyped this is a typical a cat teenage mm. girl mm. can't close her legs you mm. know and i'm like hey god I, i'm really glad it, I'm, i'm glad sorry it didn't get to that point because i don't even would have lived to that shame of been pregnant because my mom ignored something there was mm-hmm. some sort of negligence mm-hmm. in that field mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and hey i'd be lying if i said my journey has not affected how i relate with people yeah, i was going to ask yeah i struggle with friends. relationships um because when when you've been through trauma and this could be my own observation counselors can advise otherwise i feel like when you've been through so things that are so painful and yes. traumatic mm. you become the person who's always on extreme ends on one extreme end you are sasa the person who just wants to put people through hell mm. i went through hell you will go through hell tafanyia watu mother eh tafanyia watu mother round to treat what we buy us even don't really treat you and then on the other extreme you're extremely good mm. you're extremely nice to people mm. you love abundantly you are too nice too understanding because you're doing it from a point of i lacked this love yes. and and joy and being encouraged and care i know how care. it feels to lack yes so let me do it in abundance for yes. you so that you don't ever have to experience mm-hmm. that so me me niki love i love like a thousand percent when i commit it's like a hundred like mm. i just go all in mm. but then you realize people don't reciprocate it in return and i've been struggling to find a balance and it's just until recently where i got to a point i'm like you know what so that we solve this whole thing i will reciprocate people's energies so if you're bad to me i'll not be good to you if you want to you know talk to me when it's convenient for you i will do the same you know but in terms of relationships mm. lean I don't know how to process the mm-hmm. the concept of a good man. I want a good man, a committed man, a genuine man, respectful, knows how to take care of a lady. But sometimes when I see such men, I'm like, "Ah, this is a trap." And I always feel like if my own father didn't choose me, I don't think any other man will choose me. So when a man actually chooses me, I'm like this feels like a trap. Um and sometimes I feel bad. I'm like my dad set the wrong example for this man. He you know walked out and showed up when it's convenient for him and i feel like most of the time that's what men do it's disappear mm-hmm. then reappear when it's convenient for them mm-hmm. and uh, it's always I, i actually pray about it and i'm like god aki the man you sent for me i i just need a present man you know um nikazi and then there are times i'm like ah you know what i think i'm okay being single let me just focus on my career build myself build my empire and You know that's good but then sometimes you're like no man is an island you know you go online you see people have been loved okay i know <laughs> relationships mm. don't put out everything but mm. you see genuine love and you're like will i you ever experience it love. yeah and i'm like my dad really set the wrong example for this but, man but you know god chose you already come on girl i know preach so come he's going to bring someone who's going to choose you too oh hallelujah amen come on <laughs> Yes. Amen. He's, yeah. he's uh-huh. gonna he's gonna bring someone that is going to choose you too. I think it's just easy knowing you are already chosen mm-hmm. and he's keeping you for someone that will love you mm-hmm. for you and not because also of what you've gone through. Yeah. He's not trying to bring someone who yeah, let me just love her because of what she's gone mm-hmm. through. Someone who will love you for you for what's here. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yes, he already chose you. Like yeah. come on, he already chose you. Yeah. You know? And how is your relationship with your relatives right now? Actually, we're cool. Mm. We're like buddies. Mm. Um I think this is what I believe. Sometimes not seeking closure is the closure you need. Sometimes. Mm. Sometimes you just you don't need the closure. Just pray about it. Ask God to just just let it go. Leave it to God. Mm. And we have never talked about what happened that time when I was kicked out or just anything in general. But I'm cool with them. I don't feel anger towards them anymore. We I'm past it, you know. And that people might say, "Oh, maybe you're not completely healed from it." It's just like I was saying, I let go of that old me. Like 
any burden, any pain, it's any it's but it's too much. So we're cool. If they ever bring up the topic, sure. But open. yeah, but yeah. I'll not go looking for it because sometimes you can look for that closure and then you learn new things that you didn't want to learn and now you don't have the mental capacity to, to process. Deal with what, yes. Thank you. Yes. So I'm like, we're mm. good. Um mm. no one disrespects mm. anyone. We're we're chilled. So we are, let's yeah. do life. Let's do life. Huh? Yeah. Before we wind up, huh? mm-hmm. and maybe before I can ask no, let me just ask, what legacy are you looking into leaving behind? Oh, that's a deep question. Oh yeah. Ask again so I can think. <laughs> <laughs> I know most people answer this in terms of career, yes. but I've come to learn in life there's more to it than just the career, the marriage. It's just who you were. I would want to leave a legacy of authenticity, being authentic and saying, me, I'm not okay with what happened mm. this and this time. Mm. I will talk about it, get over it. I want to leave the legacy of you don't have to die with your problem. I want to be remembered as a chick who didn't die with her problems. Good. She put it on the table, yes. you know, even when it was unbearable. And just reminding people, sometimes we just have to put our pride aside and actually ask for help. Mm. That's one of the things I really yeah. struggle with. It's a work in progress, mm. but this work in progress is so slow because, yes. Lynn, I don't know how to ask for help. Mm. But I don't know how to say Sina. Mm. Okay, Nikonaya, but mm. you get the point, mm. right? And I, I just want to... Nataka watu wakiniangalia waone mungu. When they look at my life, they're like, God. Staki was saying, I don't want people to credit my media career to my voice. People say, you have an amazing voice. You have the personality. You oh, have the charisma. People. You are those people. Yeah. People is you. <laughs> people is me. You have, have a powerful people. voice. You have an amazing... You, you know? know? Yeah. yeah I, I want... I'm people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are people. people and people is, is you. Me. Yes. <laughs> I, I want people to just look at me and see God and mm. see God works in people and through people. And experience grace. Oh, panic. Girl, you said it. Tana, tana, tana. <laughs> yes, and this is, this is for my yes. strong people out yeah. there. Lean sometimes. I, I know I'm a strong lady, but sometimes I get tired of being strong. Me too. Sometimes I really don't. I want to be vulnerable. Me I want too. to cry. Me I want too. to not me be okay. Too. You me relate, too. yeah? Me too. <laughs> That is another thing we gotta discuss. Guys, I am me, strong. I hear uh-huh. people say, Lynn, you're strong. I'm like, nah, nah, let's nah, not nah, do that. Nah, nah, nah. Let's not go there. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be labeled strong. strong. I want Thank to you. be labeled as a human being. Mm-hmm. So, let's come and you're not going to check up. I love me. Pate uko na liya. Please, let's balance. It's the same thing. It's, it's the same person. It's the same person. Yeah. It's, it's the same. See, in the blog, Lynn Googie is spotted crying, crying and whatever. In a corner. Hey, 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 <laughs> let us cry when we need to cry. Let us be strong when we need to be strong. Thank you, Let please. us not be okay when we need not to be okay. You know, Thank it's you. too much pressure, especially if you're in the media space. There's too much pressure for mm-hmm. you to put on a strong face for you to be whatever uh, I'm a be lean yeah I'm, I'm a be me I'm a, yes I'm a be me you know the number be, of times we cry at home mm, no me you know especially you know you mentioned something I, nowadays I don't want to cry with my pillow here so that mm-hmm. people can't hear I'm crying I want to sit in a corner comfortably and cry and cry mm-hmm. and then when i'm done i want to pick myself up and Maka, move on to the next one Maka but give me food. room to cry mm-hmm. allow me to feel how i need to feel thank you you Please get what i'm saying your strong and sense. check on this whole st- kwanza those ones are the ones who are suffering those ones are the ones because you've already you've already put this whole strong element on them susan mm-hmm. grace is strong no one checks on them you know what i said you one don't. day i will write a book Oh, please, to talk or author. Nin, to call author. No one cares for the strong, strong ones. people. They're like, I, no, Atakama, you no, sour, she'll figure she'll it out. She'll figure it out. You get hey, what I'm saying? Check up on your strong friends. Those ones that you have labeled strong, strong. please check up on them. But before I let you go, Susan Grace, mm-hmm. maybe looking at that camera, there's something I love to do on this show. Right. What would you want to tell yourself, dear Susan Grace? Feel free. Oh, this is this is like a letter to myself. Yes, babe. Oh my God, this is gonna take an hour. I'm joking. No, <laughs> let, let it. Dear Susan Grace, I am super proud of you. You have made yourself proud. You have made your mom proud. You have made God proud. You have made your family proud. And thank you for not allowing your past to hold you hostage. Thank you for being committed mm-hmm. to changing the narrative. Thank you for always putting your faith in God, even when things are crazy even when the storms are hitting hard 
thank you for always believing that God will come through for you. You're a strong lady. You're amazing. You are blessed. You are favored. And the world will remain to remember your name. Good. And the name is Susan Grace. The name is Susan Grace. Drops mic. Period. Oh, says it drop lapel. Oh, okay. <laughs> me i'm so uh, proud of you mm-hmm. i want you first to know that you did not deserve to go through what happened to you none of it oh yeah none of it is your fault yeah. you were a child that needed to be a child right yeah. and even as you go through this journey i love i was going through the comments i was going through what people are saying about you yeah. i love the number of people that you are teaching it's okay to be vulnerable let's pick these things out i love the number of people that you're encouraging with your story you are not what happened to you Thank you me. are not what happened to you Cindy mm-hmm. Kabla nifunge mm-hmm. is there anything you wanted to add that you feel like we've left out and also where can my lovely people find you and connect with you right yes. um do I feel like we've left anything out honestly yeah. I feel like we've exhausted everything oh, really? yeah but uh, no, let's let's yes. yes um honestly we got a dollar for every time we've high five yes, tunataka kwa pa millionaires yeah <laughs> <laughs> Mm-mm. But um, I think mine is just to encourage people. Um, just like you've said, you're not what you've been through. Yes. And I started by saying this and I'll say it again. Stop allowing your past to hold you hostage. Whatever happened, happened. And it's okay. Allow yourself. Okay, when a moment you feel like crying, allow yourself to just moan yes. the period. But mm-hmm. snap out of it. Don't get too comfortable mm-hmm. there, right? Snap out of it and be encouraged that imagine kuna mungu. I know sometimes it, it looks far fetched we're believing in someone who we've never seen mm-hmm. but if you have never seen God if you've never seen what God can do just look at Susan Grace yes and you'll get your answer and you'll get your answer yes where can we connect with you at? where can you find me on Instagram at Susan Grace yes. underscore KE that is S U S A N not S U Z mm. that's S U S A N G R A C E underscore KE Facebook yeah. Susan Grace yes. um LinkedIn Susan Grace, TikTok Susan Grace and Asko KE, yeah. just Susan Grace everywhere. Yes. Yeah. So you nifungie tu hii episode. Nione ni kufunga hizo ifunga ifunga. Tunafunga. Ifunga tu ende. All right. So, um do you like it says some of the Susan Grace. Where where? Well ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this beautiful day. My name is Susan Grace alongside Lingugi and I will see you in the next episode. Yes. Tuonane kesho 10 a.m. Tuonane kesho 10 a.m. My people go go please cheer this girl. Check out what she's doing encourage her please to start her platform we need this podcast we need her voice sisi ni wale wa you have a powerful voice we are people people are us and it's none of anyone's business let me ask you something we are people eh eh in iswali ya mwisho be honest a lot of people tell me apparently i sound like caroline motoko Yes. Yes, you do. Oh my god, I thought you were going to say something else. Oh, um, no, you, <laughs> you don't. You don't get my I'm back. Ki- no, I'm kidding. You don't. I sound like me, right? I think you sound like Susan Grace. Thank you very I much. I think you sound like Susan Grace. Yeah, That's... I get that comment a lot and I'm really? like, really? Na Edgar na shit? No. No shit, scholar. Thank you. What a woman. You It's sound on. Yes. I sound like Susan Grace. You sound like Susan Grace, <laughs> the one and only Susan Grace. Are we together? Period. Period. <laughs> yes, I, you sound like Susan Grace. I love Caroline Motuko. You know, which you call Caroline Motuko Caro. Mhm. Ataka Serika. Of course. She's Caroline Motuko. That's the same one. thing. I always tell people I'm not Sue. I'm you're not Susie. You're Susan. I'm not Gracie. Yes. You're you either Susan. call me Susan or Grace. Or Susan Grace. Okay, now this part you sound like Caroline Motuko, not the voice. Oh. So, don't come here, Sue. Don't come ah! here. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm about to go. Thank you so much for tuning in and as always, I want to know what has been your take home from our guest. We are rebuilding. We are breaking generational curses. We are building. We are saying no enough is enough. This ends with us. We are making sure that we are intentional about parenthood. We are making sure that we are intentional even when we get into these workplaces or even in marriage. So wherever you are right there and you've listened to her story, what is your take home? On the screen, these are her social handles. Please, Susan Grace, go and connect with her. 
these are her social media handles and even if you would want to encourage her to start something please tell her on the comment section dio akisoma i feel i feel sisi ni wale wa powerful voice we are people and being those people is none of anyone's business but apart from that guys i hope you know that sometimes any all the things that have happened to you are not your fault and dear parents dear parents let's be intentional about parenthood please watch and to go intentional about parenthood as antenna sana for tuning in if you want to share your story with me hop on your email eco info at digital or link.google at digital. thank you to everyone who makes this work happen thank you for everyone who makes this work easy today i've really enjoyed my shooting days i've been here with incredible guests doing different segments and they've all been amazing you know you are not what happened to you that's the take home from all the guests that we've had on this particular day and of course i want to say thank you so much to tap up by now you know what it is to me any code yango hapo get your 10 percent cash back and i hope i can get to see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m i've been your girl lynn haley davis or you can call me lynn jagleski or you can call me lynn denzel washington whatever you want well china maybe you can call me brooklyn my people yeah it's been real asante sana to my team edgar scholar and of course muga natusemi asante kwa kelvin sam for compiling these episodes and making sure they reach you guys right on time to on any kesho sawa sawa god bless bye bye you know the theme then you gotta say, Anything's out of me.